You're listening to the hour of the time. I'm William Cooper. And I'm Pooh. And you're going to do the pledge. Yes. Go for it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sweetheart. I love you. I love you, too. And as usual, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. We'll have you back again. <laughs> no worry about that, huh? Well, tonight, folks, we were supposed to have a guest. The guest failed to call in, so we'll have open phones tonight. The number is 522, excuse me, 502-337-2922. That's 502-337-2922. Don't go away. I'll be right back to take your calls. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Hey, honey. Something's not right. Watch your hands. Please don't walk past. And I'm from the IRS with a power of tax. If you've got a complaint, stay in the back. Get out of this house. Serve your charges. Give me your code. You better obey if you are troubled. Now it's the good stuff and do for your code. Well, folks, I gave you the wrong number. It's 520. I'm not used to this new area code business. I'm still back with 602, but it's 520 for most parts of the country. From some parts of the country, it doesn't work, and you have to still use the old 602, and up to a certain date, either one of those are supposed to work. And then they'll flip off 602, and only 520 will work. So it's 520 337 Two nine two two. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. God bless. It's Dave from Oklahoma. Hello, Dave. How are you? Oh, just wonderful. How are you? Good. Hey, uh, you may already have this information, but I thought I might uh, shoot at your way anyway. Representative Charles Key in Oklahoma had uh, called for an independent investigation of the bombing of the Murrah Building and uh, did an excellent job, I thought, with his press conference, and uh, as in the course of doing that and bringing all these questions up, caught an incredible amount of flack. I think the man's got a great deal of uh, intestinal fortitude for even sticking his toes in the water on this one. Anybody in this country that tells the truth is going to get flack. In fact, they might get buried. Well, he's getting it. You know, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if his... Uh, his for his career in politics is shot right now. But I think he's on the right course, and he needs all the help he, and support he can get, especially uh, anyone out there in listening land that might have any uh, information regarding events surrounding the bombing that could uh, help him in his investigation. And I had his phone numbers that I thought you might want to have. Good. Give those out and uh, repeat them twice slowly. Okay. His number at the state capitol is area code 
5-4. That's area code 405-557-7354. And uh, his home phone number, which he thought was fine for us to have, was... Wait a minute, did he say it was fine for you to have or to give out over the radio? Everybody can have it, he said. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's area code 405 405-787-9333. And then he has another office number, which is 405 405- Nine four three nine 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 six. That's four zero five nine four three nine 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 six. And uh, he he needs all the help that he can get. Yes, there are uh, some individuals that were rescue workers and firefighters that have information that he would like to hear from them and everything will be kept completely confidential if that's the way they want to keep it. Or anybody else. Anybody well. else. Exactly. Hey, uh, that aside, we took your advice over the 4th mm -hmm. and bugged out for a couple of days. Good. And it was a blast. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> yeah. For anybody out there that's never bugged out for a day or two, uh, you know, our biggest question was, what do we need to... Uh, do what we do at our home, but <laughs> put somewhere else. And can it all fit in the car? <laughs> and uh, I would encourage anybody out there to go through that exercise because you'll learn a lot about whether you're not you're uh, actually prepared to do anything like that. Uh, fortunately, nobody had any problems around here that we have heard of so far. But uh, it was a great learning experience for us, and uh, we plan to do it whenever the need arises. Good. Thank you, Dave. Anytime. God bless. You too. Bye. Thank you for calling. You bet. A lot of people laugh at that, folks, but uh, you see, we study history, and history tells us what will probably happen in the future. Socialists have traditionally struck their enemies in the dead of night on major holidays when all of their enemies will be at home. And that's why we advise on every major holiday that those who would be targeted by a socialist takeover not be anywhere near where anybody might think they would be during that time. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Bill. Uh, Bill, I was, uh, uh, well, a long time ago, I, I uh, was working at a radio station up in Des Moines, Iowa, about 1967, 68. Have you got your radio on? Uh, I Turn it off. All right. About 67, 68. There we go. I was working at a radio station. One of my jobs was to clear the, the wire copy off the wire and sort it. It was the middle of the night, and I sorted it for the guy when they came in the morning. And, and I was a follower of the space program at the time, and there was a story that crossed the wire about one of the orbiters that photographed man-made structures on the moon. Just a little two-sentence story. And I waited and waited and waited for a follow-up, because that was the pattern of, I don't remember if it was UPI or AP. Mm -hmm. he usually came, came across them with, with more complete stories, and it never came across. And it struck me only recently the similarities between that and, and the uh, release of the press release from the Roswell uh, crash. There was the initial, like, releasing something really odd, bizarre, alien to the media, and then, in this case, I never heard anything more about it. Mm -hmm. In the Roswell case, there was out and out denial. And, uh, you know. In this case, there is too. I've been showing those photographs for years. In fact, I showed uh, at least six hours, maybe more, of uh, slides of the anomalous, uh, what have to be man made or intelligence made structures on the moon during the conference. Uh, but, but, but were you aware had, that NASA had actually at one point announced this and then, and then retracted or just forgot about it? No, I wasn't, uh, as a matter of fact, and I don't think anybody else is either. It would be nice to get some, some hard copy on that. Well, yeah, but it's, it's been a long time. 
Mexico City also built a lot, a lot, well, a lot in the last four years. Reports of a UFO, it's seen over air shows. Somebody wants this thing to be seen over Mexico City. They want it to be seen whenever they're seen. Uh, they wouldn't be seen. I mean, these things demonstrate an incredible level of technology, the ability to move at speeds beyond anybody's ability to comprehend it with the physics that we know, make uh, right angle turns without slowing down and uh, disappear and then appear miles away in the sky uh, just uh, you know a second later or a split second later so if they didn't want to be seen they wouldn't be yeah and they want us to think it's from another planet yeah that's exactly right, All right thank you bill you're welcome thank you for calling five two zero three three seven two nine two two is the number good evening you're on the air yeah this is al sharpton you no it's not al sharpton it's little poopy diapers and your diaper is dragging on the floor. It's got such a big load in it. Your mommy is still looking for you, little fellow. If you could uh, quit dragging your diaper across the door and spreading your mess long enough to use your little tiny pea brain, you might be able to find her in time to keep from drowning in your own feces. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi. Good evening, Bill. Um, first of all, I'm calling with a request that you might hopefully consider. Um, on April 14th, 17th, and 18th, you were on a roll. You were doing uh, the shows. They uh, start, they started at Easter. I don't know if you recall these. But they're concerned with uh, you're talking about the Bible and the definition of words and the definition of uh, uh, the end of the age and eon and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Oklahoma thing. And then you were going to continue that. And then the Oklahoma bombing occurred. And then it's yeah, but unfortunately, that's one of those things that you have to start from the beginning, and you have to have some continuity all the way through. I'm not going to go back to it. Okay. Well, just wanted to throw that out. And uh, one other thing was uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I happened to wander into an antique store here in town, and I don't do that very frequently. And there, on one of the cases, I spotted this book. Um, leather-bound book called The History of Freemasonry. And uh, I was wondering if you were um, familiar with it, because it's volume one. Well, it he asked the gentleman how many volumes there were, and he, wasn't, he didn't know, he didn't know anything else about it. It depends um, upon who wrote it, when it was printed, and uh, who published it. Okay, well, the, publish there isn't a, all right, the publisher is, I have it in front of me, John C. Yorston and Company. Um, the principal author is... Robert, and the middle name is F R E K E. I don't know how that sounds. Freck Gould, and he's identified as past senior grand deacon of England. There's no copyright date from, but from reading it and uh, footnotes and uh, um, references he makes to other things, I would say it's written about 1890 because he mentions things in 1860, 1870. Um, and uh, I started reading it, and I'm just curious. Uh, it's called the History of Freemasonry. It's antiquities, symbols, concepts and customs, etc. Uh, what's your question? Well, if you were familiar with this volume, how many, this book, or how many volumes are in the set? I have no idea. Okay, all right. Um, and I'm just going to throw one other thing before I hang up. The gentleman who just spoke about the um, the, the blurb about um, structures on the moon and then it disappeared, he didn't hear anything else about it. I noticed something similar to that maybe about three months ago. On our local news here, there was a story about I guess a tunnel or tunnels that were discovered in northern Italy going to Switzerland and they were just, they were um, painted like Egyptian um, pyramids with Egyptian scenes and so forth. Did you, did you ever see that story? No, I didn't. Okay, and then there was no other, I waited for other news, uh, and news, I checked newspapers and national news, it just disappeared. Um, well, check the source. Everybody always checks everything but the source. Who aired it? Uh, well, that's... Go to them. Okay. Find out if they keep a record of what they hear. Okay. And if they don't have it, find out what news service they got it from and go to them. I have people who I give out information on the air, and I'll tell, I'll read a, an article out of a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I'll cite the newspaper, the date, where the newspaper is published, and what page the article is on, and I'll get 50 letters in the mail wanting to know if they can get a copy of it from me. Okay. <laughs> No. The answer is no. I give you the source so you can go to the source and get it from them just like I did. Some people seem to think that I've got superhuman powers and they're not able to do it for some reason. I call that the sheeple factor. Right. 
Nothing personal. I, I don't take it personal. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bill. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. 520-337-2922 is the number. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to uh, get your two cents worth in tonight, get in here on the air. Hello, Bill Cooper. This is Paul from Paulus. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi. Good to hear your voice again. Well, I hope you've been hearing it all this time. Well, I have a lot of it on tape already. Oh. But it, I've been kind of taking a break and feeling good, though, actually. I need a vacation myself. Well, good for you. And uh, my biggest question is I want to know how Annie is. Annie's fine. According to the doctor, we got uh, four weeks and six days to go. There's, oh, that's great. Uh, there's one question I always want to ask you. It's a little personal, but I always wanted to know, where did you meet Annie, and did she come to America, or was she born in America? Where did I meet Annie? Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, not a long story. I guess I can recount that. You, want to... I mean, you don't mind my asking. No, I don't mind you asking. And I mean, I've talked to Pearl, I've talked to Annie, and I always, I've seen them on the videotapes uh, when you did the uh, Area 51. I said, you know, it's like you almost know them. I said, I was very curious about, was she born in America? How did you meet her? Okay. I'll give that off the air. I'll give it while you're off the air. How's that? All right. Thanks for calling, Paul. It was good to hear from you. Bye. Well, let me tell you the story. When I was the executive director of Pacific Coast Technical Institute in California, in Anaheim, I had a policy that if our schools were to survive, and if we were really doing what we said we were doing, that I would only hire graduates of our college system. And so when I needed a secretary, I called our business college in uh, Whittier, I believe it was, told them I needed a secretary and had to be somebody that could type fast and take dictation fast. And so they gave me Annie's name told me that she was a Chinese girl and she didn't speak great English, but uh, she could uh, type 90 words a minute, which I'd never seen anybody do. I'd never had a secretary that good, and I understand that there's a lot of them out there. Not as many as there should be, probably, but a few. And uh, that she could take dictation at approximately the same rate. So uh, I asked them to send her over and made an appointment for her. Well, she never showed up. So I called the school back and uh, uh, asked them, you know, what happened? Is there some reason why she couldn't show up? And they told me she was really shy, very shy. And uh, so I told, I made another appointment and, and told her to, uh, told them to send her over, and she didn't show again. So this time I called the college and asked for her home number, which I got. Called her at home, and she was very shy and very scared. And uh, I assured her that it was okay to come down. Nobody was going to uh, uh, bite her head off, and uh, uh, she would be safe, and we would treat her fine. And she came down for an interview and passed all the tests, and I hired her. And she was my secretary, and we worked in a work relationship for a while. I was also the kind of employer that liked to reward my employees. If somebody did a good job or if they needed boosting or uh, anything, I mean, I worked with them very closely to make them feel like that they were uh, either succeeding or, or, or could succeed and that they would get all the support from me that they could. So I took my employees to dinner, I had uh, company parties and dances and uh, uh, gave out awards and occasionally I would just walk by and hand somebody a hundred dollar bill if they were doing really well and um, one day Annie came into the office very quietly and said that she was going to leave. <laughs> I said, why? What's, what's the matter? You're a great secretary. And she said, uh, well, I've been here, and I forget how long. It was a while. And, uh, you know, you reward everybody else, and everybody else is, is congratulated and everything. And, and uh, you know, you just talk to me about business. And I was crushed. <laughs> I felt, oh, my God, I've really failed this woman. And uh, because I didn't want her to feel that way. I didn't want any of my employees to feel that way. And, and I knew that upon reflection that she was right. And it, I had not intended to do that. So uh, 
I waited a couple of days and, and told her, you know, just think about it, don't quit. I waited for a couple of days and then, then I took her out to dinner. And uh, we just fell in love. And we've been together ever since. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a shame these days. You, and I didn't take advantage of her, and she wasn't taking advantage of me or anything else. We just simply fell in love. She's just a wonderful woman, and many of you have talked to her and dealt with her. You know that. And uh, it takes a wonderful woman to stick through the kind of crap that we get around here and the way that uh, friends bail out when the going gets tough and uh, uh, people you think are friends turn out to be turncoats and informers and uh, uh, really scumballs, to tell you the truth. And uh, Annie's always there. Come hell or high water, rain or shine, Annie is always there. Extremely, unbelievably kind and loyal and a wonderful mother for Pooh. And uh, I don't know what else I could say about her. I've done some shows in her honor. And uh, but anyway, that's it, Paul. I hope that answers your question. And maybe some night. I've tried to get Annie on here, but she's shy. She will not get in front of the microphone. I'll try right now. Annie, you want to come up here? Where are you? Annie, hello? She says no. <laughs> so, I guess we'll go to another call. I don't know if I just cut somebody off or not. If I did, I apologize. I couldn't remember whether I still had Paul hanging on there or, or I had picked somebody else up. If, if I cut you off inadvertently, I apologize. Good evening. You're on the air. Shadow nose. <laughs> Another stupid little poopy diapers. Only this time he's wearing his diapers on his nose. You all heard him. Socialism sucks, and so do socialists. Unfortunately, they are also masochists. They love this kind of treatment. And any time they call here and act like the little poopy diapers that they are, whether they're wearing their poopy diapers on their nose or on their derriere, they will get what they ask for. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Bill. This is John from Sioux Falls. Hi, John. Hi. Um, say hello to Pooh and say hello to Annie. I've got a question out here that deals with the flags, uh, or the American national flags that have a yellow fringe. And supposedly, when I was in a congressional race in 1992, someone asked me about it. And I've researched it for three years, and I find out that only military flags can have a yellow fringe on it. Not true. Military or admiralty jurisdiction. Okay. In, that, in admiralty law, maritime law, military law, martial law. I agree. That's correct. Okay. Because I have found out from certain congressional research reports that are now supposedly being, I don't know if it's misused or civilians when they read flag, think civilian flag. The original documents that uh, I've written to my local senators here in Sioux Falls and the governor go back to a volume 34, Official Opinions of the Attorneys General, uh, printed 1926, pages 483 to 485, was a letter in 1923 from the officers of the Military Order of the Loyal Legion asking President Harding, saying, hey, how come these military flags got yellow fringe? And basically between the adjutant general of then the army, going back to the civilian attorneys general, this document proves that civilian flags are not allowed to have yellow fringe. And it's caused a lot of concern, and I have actually confronted the American Legion, who has it in their little flag etiquette book, and my, my own senators of all things, and I am pushing for the legislation that will go across with this other flag amendment. Don't need legislation. They should just simply say, hey, if we're not under martial law, why do we have flags that say we are? Well, I have done that even with my local mayor here. The truth is, we are under martial law and have been since the Civil War, most probably, but most absolutely since 1933. And I agree with you, and that's why I'm getting people just amazingly shocked and probably bent out of shape here when even the mayor of Sioux Falls goes, gee, John, I didn't know that. I'm not going to buy any more of those little flags with those little yellow fringes on it. Yeah. So hopefully everybody who's listening out there on shortwave, there is the document. 
1926. Well, why don't you tell them where and how to get that document so that they can get it, because most of them will not spend the energy that it takes to flick a fly off their fingertip unless you make it easy for them. Okay. I'm going to give it three times. Write your congressman or write your senator. The U.S. Department of Justice. Official Opinions of the Attorneys General. Volume 34, printed in 1926. Pages 483 through 487, where it says, Military flags have that by ancient custom. There is no reason and or precedent for any other flag to have a yellow fringe on it. That's correct. Did you know that there was also a civil flag? In regards to civil flags, as the president, as of the commander in chief, and of the military flags of those officers, yes, they do have. No, do, 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 do you know that, that there is specifically a civil flag? As regards to probably, uh, what is it, U.S. statute, uh, or U.S. Code Title IV, uh, Section 1, the flag of the United States shall have 13 horizontal stripes, alternate red and white. No, it's 13 vertical stripes, alternate red and white. Vertical, up and down? Up and down, that's correct. Well, is that, you mean in regards to hanging of the flag in a... No, thing? no, that is a flag that in the early history of this country was called the civil flag. That's the flag was that was flown by civilians and cities and uh, business establishments as the national flag. Well, I didn't probably get to that, and thank you for updating me there. You're welcome. For reference to that, subscribe to Veritas and get the back <laughs> issue that contains the article. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, not Veritas. Uh, perspectives. Mm -hmm. But America... Uh, perceptions, I'm sorry. My yep. brain's going to kill me. <laughs> perceptions, just in a recent issue, had an article covering that, and uh, we have one and have used it several times. Okay, but the American Legion has come out in their flag etiquette book, and they're probably the worst, and I say that because, unfortunately, I happen to have been past tense one. Most people do not do any kind of real research. They'll go to the first source that they can find, whether it's right or wrong, and they'll use whatever it says uh, without checking any further or making sure that it's accurate. If it's printed, most people think that it's the right thing. Right. Yeah. And that's where I've got this American Legion. The Congressional Research Report, which was built by the Library of Congress, 90-338-A, United States flag, federal law relating to display and associated questions, by the same guy, James Hall, legislative attorney, American Law Division, June 30th, 1990, does only one page, and it's called CRS-12 where he did a three-page summary of all these other documents, and he said, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's a flag and the fringe, and it's honorable. Well, it doesn't say that in the original, and this document has even been since 1981, where this same James Hall, report number 81-126A753-1, one two zero dated as of May eighteenth, nineteen eighty one, JC three four six US by the same James Hall did this little three three paragraph executive summary and completely took it out of context. To a civilian, if he read it, flag means flag to him, and flag doesn't mean military flag, which was the original context. So hopefully, my little crusading out here and writing up to my senators and congressmen, something might happen, but hopefully the people out on the short wave will start pounding on their mayors and senators, too, and uh, hopefully get some intelligent people. Well, yeah, but you know they have a perfect right to fly that flag because we're in the martial law. We're <laughs> under a state of national emergency declared by the president. Yeah, I understand it. Unfortunately, hopefully we can understand that we would desire civil and common law, and we are free people. Yes. Well, we could be free people. Well, uh, we're, not, play the we're different not free people by a long shot. Is study, and hopefully that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Bill. Bye-bye. Don't go away, folks. <laughs> Let me see here. I'll be back after uh, this short little thing here. I want you all, all, stay tuned. Don't go away. 
You're going to get mad. You're going to get angry. You're going to lose. Control. You're going to get mad. You're going to get angry. You're going to lose. Control. The Hour of the Time is brought to you by Swiss America Trading, folks. The only source that I know of that I can <coughs> wholeheartedly <coughs> and 100% with no reservations recommend for you to get your hands on some real money or just some precious metals in any one of their various forms, and I'll tell you why. It's the only real proven throughout history, and if the historical record maintains for the future, you will be able to preserve the value of your assets by purchasing or putting at least some of your assets into these precious metals, preferably in the form of gold or silver coin. And uh, as you've heard me say many times, I'm not stoking your fires to tell you that if you do this, you're going to make a big investment and get rich. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, you're not going to lose the value of your assets due to creeping inflation or crap's collapse of the economy. That's all I'm telling you. You could get rich. You could make a killing. <clears throat> but I'm not an expert on that. don't know how to tell you to do it. And I don't recommend it. you at least sound out the idea than Swiss American Trading because they'll level with you. And everything's recorded. They're not going to tell you any lies. So, folks, and you know, like always, uh, there's there's a market out there. You can shop around and maybe get a cheaper deal, but you won't get a buyback policy. You won't get a guarantee. You won't be absolutely assured that what you're getting is what they say they're selling you. But with Swiss America Trading, you have all of those guarantees, plus my personal guarantee that if you feel you're slighted or mistreated or lied to or cheated or anything, you call me and I'll make sure that it's straightened out real quick. And I mean straightened out. Even if they have to refund every single cent of your money, it will be straightened out. But first, I'll listen to all the tapes, and I'll see who misrepresented what. And if you're the one that's not telling the truth, you better watch out, because I'm going to roast your ears. And that's happened at least once. So, folks, if you want to get your hands on some real money, and do it with people that aren't going to cheat you. 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-289-2646. Do it now. You'll be glad that you did. These are good people. They care about you. They care about the message of this broadcast. <laughs> and if you've been listening to this program for a long time, you know that's true. Because nobody in their right mind would stick around with the hour of the time if they did it. You've got to get mad. You've got to get angry. angry. You've got to lose. Control. Control. You gotta get mad. You gotta get angry. You got to lose control. Good evening, you're on the air. Mr. Cooper. Yes. Six two seven from Detroit. Hello. Yes, sir. I'm glad you're back. Thank you. I thought you might have been raptured or something, and I missed the boat. I wasn't sure. Uh, well, <laughs> glad to have you back. If I get raptured, it's going to be a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, sir. Well, I, I think it will because <laughs> I don't believe in the rapture to start with. So. Uh, well, neither do I, but uh, no, nevertheless, it's um, something to think about. However, uh, I'm a militia person. I was passing out information last week at the flea market. And uh, somebody jumped out of a car and handed me an application for the Invisible Empire of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. And I just wanted to give this information out in case, uh, you know, so people will know that uh, they're going to pick on us because they're aware of what we're to have to be militia people, what equipment we're to have and how we're to train, and therefore we're eligible for them. And uh, Well, you better be careful because a lot of it is not the Ku Klux Klan. It's the ADL trying to trap patriots so that they can say that they're racist. Absolutely. It, it, this is a typical ADL maneuver. We had a uh, gathering down in Phoenix not too long ago uh, where there were quite a few people there who spoke. I was one of the speakers uh, during the thing out in the... And there was quite a lot of people there. And uh, out in the parking lot while this was going on, there were some ADL people putting Nazi literature on the windshields of cars, and there was a photographer taking pictures of them doing it. 
Well, they got caught, and that's the only reason it didn't appear in the paper. If they hadn't got caught, you would have seen it plastered all over the front page of the Arizona Republic that the racist patriots of Arizona were getting ready to wipe out the Jews and the, and the blacks, or some bullshit like that. That's correct. They have the ten laws on, it, on here, and they all sound pretty nice. One of them, like, you won't be addicted to drugs, and then this one here is quite interesting. I swear allegiance to and will abide by the Constitution of the United States of America and its legally adopted amendments. I will not violate the laws or statutes of the United States or its governmental subdivision so long as they are adopted and administered within the constitutional dictate. And this is what they want us to do. They, they want us to, they want to bring us in so they can slur the whole movement. And, uh, Absolutely, and you better stay away from it. I've warned you people many, many times who to stay away from, and and, um, and it's most. <laughs> yeah, I like to put out over the airways that I served at, in the uh, combat uh, 198 flight infantry out of uh, Chu Lai, Vietnam, and uh, uh, my whole squad was wiped out except for the medic and myself, and the, the, the rest were all black. And those four uh, uh, young men who died that day were all black, and I loved them. I loved them like my dad and my brother and and. Uh, they guarded my back, and I guarded theirs, and I never, ever saw them as being uh, anyone but a patriot. And I, I love them. I love them to this day, and it, it, uh, it haunts me. Also, uh, uh, I was uh, really appreciative. While you were gone, they played uh, Behold a Pale Horse, a couple of tapes of that, you know, uh, by you, and I certainly appreciate that. Oh, well, I, I'm not really... I don't really know what you're talking about. Behold a Pale Horse is my book. Well, they, they, uh, they, they had a couple of on, on uh, Hitler's movement as far as that goes, and the uh, White Horse, whatever it was there. That was interesting. They did that for a few days, and uh, uh, that was nice. And um, Oh, that was probably the occult history of the Third Reich. Yeah, I, that, that must have been part of it. They only played, there's a whole big series, they only played about three series, but it was yeah. interesting. A lot of this stuff in the swastika, and a lot of stuff is raising its ugly head right to this day. Uh-huh. And uh, so that was quite interesting. And uh, really, uh, Mr. Cooper, that's just about all I have to say in my regards and prayers for you and yours, sir. Well, thank you for calling. Yes, sir. And uh, I know that haunts you. I could hear you choking up there. I fought in Vietnam on the rivers. I'm familiar with Chu Lai. Uh, and uh, I have great empathy for your feelings and for you. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Good evening. Uh, Bill, I don't know if any of your listeners uh, saw it last week, but on CNN, I believe it was Wednesday or Thursday, uh, there was a piece about a, uh, a town in uh, Illinois, Rosemont, Illinois, which I believe is a suburb of Chicago. Um, there was a fact. Excuse me? There was a fact. Oh, was it? Was it? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, I'm not. Well, no, the, what, what, what was happening there is that there are, uh, they actually, the local police actually have set up checkpoints going in and out of town. I, I was amazed and shocked when I saw it. They, they are, they were asking people their names, where were they going, what their business was, and it was absolutely amazing. I was just, uh, I was. And, and everybody was telling them, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nobody said it's none of your business, or do you have a warrant, or do you have oh. a reason, a probable cause for thinking I've committed some crime. Nobody said any of those things, did they? Exactly. Most of the sheep were saying how great it was. Oh, it's wonderful. Hitler's, oh, yeah. Hitler's here. Let's have a parade. <laughs> it, I, no, I have it on tape. In fact, I, I waited up all night until I, I could uh, uh, tape it on the uh, headline news. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, if you want, I could send it out to you. Oh, I'd love to. I'll play it on the air. Oh yeah, oh, I'll definitely uh, I'll send it out to you. Yeah, they were asking you these these little old ladies, and they were saying how fantastic and wonderful it was how they were watching over there. Yeah, this, this is how Hitler did it. You know, oh, ex exactly, Bill. Exactly how he did it. I'll I'll take care of you. I'll get rid of the crime. We'll get rid of all these nasty people who are making Germany bad. Exactly, Bill. And it was just it was just amazing. I mean, they showed it on TV. They were asking these people, "What is your name? Where are you going? What's your business?" And I was just like. Well, <laughs> guess what? They're doing it all across the country, but in, in a lot of instances, what they're doing is taking pictures of license plates. They trace the license plate number, and then you get a questionnaire in the mail. Well, We have copies of these questionnaires from uh, several states. Exactly, Bill. In fact, they, they, they mentioned on this little piece that if uh, somebody did tell them, well, to know your business, guess what? They were trailed by, their, by the police. 
uh, to find out where they were going. So right away, if you told them, well, none of your business, you're a criminal. You know, you're, you're guilty of something. But um, What you're guilty of is, is, uh, is being a red-blooded, true-blue American who believes in freedom. Right, right. Were, but, but in the New World Order, that's a crime. Exactly. There was one lady there who uh, basically uh, uh, talked, uh, spoke against and, you know, said, hey, it was none of your business, and, uh, you know, that's that. And uh, if I didn't do anything wrong, then, uh, hey, you know, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like I said, they uh, they talked to four people, and the idiots, of course, all thought it was a, a good idea. And uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I just thought maybe you had seen it or some of your other... Uh, no, I haven't. Send me the tape and I'll play it on the air so Americans will find out that we're not lying to them. I get these letters and uh, people call. I got one not too long ago. The guy says, uh, why are you pulling my... Why are you yanking my chain? <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it's, just, it's absolutely amazing. In fact, around here in New Jersey, they have... Uh, they have their periodic monthly checkpoints on some of the uh, main arteries. Uh, they say they're checking for uh, the uh, stickers, the uh, you know the uh, inspection stickers. But uh, you know they, they don't even have a right to do that unless they have probable cause that you didn't conform to the law. And if the law says you have your vehicle inspected, if you drive a vehicle, which I don't, uh, then if they have probable cause to think that uh, you didn't conform to the law and you're subject to that law, then they have the right to stop you. But not unless. Yes. Well, Bill, these, these socialists are going to get their utopian new world order if they don't wake up soon. It's, what they're going to get is a civil war. It, well, they, that's, what, that's exactly what they're going to get. And I think that's exactly what they want to be able to justify what they want to do. Well, Bill, I'm all for trying to settle this a peaceful way. Are you Me are, too, and that's why I've advised people, whoever fires the first shot loses. Exactly. Uh, but Bill, they're just pushing us and pushing us and pushing us. And uh, like you said, they're, you know, you can only be pushed so far. And uh, I think they're going to find this out very soon, that uh, once you get the real patriotic Americans riled up, hey, look out, you know. Yeah. Right. Okay, Bill, look, it was nice talking with you, and uh, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for calling. Bye. Unfortunately, just like in the beginning of this country, there aren't a whole lot of red-blooded American patriots. You know, it was only 3.5% of the colonists who opposed the king, banded together as militias, fought the Revolutionary War, and made this country. Everybody else were Tories, or they just didn't give a damn and did not participate. And whatever happens in the future will probably be about the same percentages. Good evening, you're on the air. Yes, Bill, I really appreciate all that you've done. And I'm one of the few callers that has only been listening for a few weeks. I wish I'd been listening forever. Well, thank you. Uh, it usually, it usually takes longer than that to uh, catch on to what we're even talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Uh, believe me. Uh, all my life I've dedicated myself to the truth uh, from age 12. And it's just amazing that somehow I didn't catch on to shortwave years, years ago. Uh, thank God that you're there. I appreciate you opening my eyes. And I just wish somehow that this denigration of all of this would just somehow just fizzle. But I don't see that happening. I don't either. And there's a reason why you never caught on the shortwave. You know that in every country in the world except for the United States, almost everybody has a shortwave radio. In fact, in foreign countries outside the United States, almost 90% of every population has shortwave radios, except in third world countries where they never have enough money to ever get a shortwave radio, and then they have like one radio for a neighborhood, and everybody listens to it. And it's um, always been the way that oppressed peoples have discovered the truth throughout the history of radio. It made me really consider, reconsider, uh, you know, how did I come into this world uh, and with all this deception and never know what's happening until uh, even just fairly recently. Uh, as much as I've dedicated myself to the truth about spiritual things and thought in those directions, it's amazing to me that there's so much lack of the light of truth. And I thank God for you quoting chapter and verse on these people. Chapter and verse. And that has that really got my attention. The first night I heard you, all I heard was chapter and verse, and it was great. I knew that you had something happening there, and I better keep listening. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I really do. 
Uh, thanks, thanks again, and I'm going to be a, a definite listener, and I hope to be able to send you the, the money for the Veritas as soon as possible. Uh, I've, I've sent off to the uh, media spotlight, and I haven't heard back yet. I wonder if it was because I sent a postal money order. Uh, I'm just wondering. I should have heard back by now. I have no idea. Okay. Keep it going. Thanks, go. sen- thanks again, Bill. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Well, that's a good call. We always quote chapter and verse on this broadcast because I learned a long time ago. I can get on here and talk from memory and what I know and tell people what's going on and tell them to go out and look it up and they won't do it. I just learned a long time ago they won't do it. So I have to give them chapter and verse. I have to tell them where to get it, what the numbers are, where it came from. And then some of them will do it and make copies and pass it around. And then... uh, people start to wake up. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, uh, Rick from D.C. Bill, I have a a, a real perplexing problem here. I think you're the guy that can help me out. I am 37 years old, a uh, Caucasian male. I have three children under the age of five. I have an entire plethora of uh, youngsters flowing in and out of the household every day. And tonight, the five-year-old female, Devin, said, Can you read me a book? And I, I said, Certainly. And she sat on my lap. The wife looked at me and said, Don't do that. So... I've read the book uh, in defiance of the wife, and uh, (laughs) uh, after the fact, she told me that I could be held accountable for all manner of uh, atrocities, and I am in the state of Maryland, actually, and I looked up the code, um, wondering about uh, your opinion, knowing that you are a parent, uh, about the uh, relative uh, demonstration of, of, of well-being and, uh, and, and good Christian charity toward a child. She, uh, my wife accused me tonight that I could be implicated as a child molester. Well, for what? What, what did she say that would have been interpreted that you molested a child? Well, no, she did not implicate me directly, but she's saying that I had a female five-year-old child sitting on my lap as a 37-year-old male. Oh, your wife has gone off the deep end. I hate to say that, but it's true. She's gone off the deep end. I think you're right, Bill. I have never seen anyone in my life whoever interpreted a man, a father, reading to a five-year-old child in his lap as anything other than kindness and and, uh, gentleness and and parenting and all of the things that you're supposed to do. Now, if she was 14 years old, I'd say that uh, you've gone off the deep end. (laughs) Very good. And I hope the... uh tape machine is rolling in Beltsville, Maryland, because I'd like to play that back to the wife. I, I, I will close with saying that uh, uh, my education curve has uh, uh, quadrupled in a very short period of time by association with you. I thank you, and I have called the uh, Swiss America people and thank them and I look forward to continued broadcast. Well, thank you very much. That's very kind. Thank you so much. And thank you for calling. Good evening. Well, another nice call. Well, folks, I'll tell you, when they started harping about short wave, they, they increased our audience here in the United States to an unbelievable number. We had approximately 10 million listeners worldwide before they did that. Now we have no idea how many listeners we have, but I get so much mail, I can't even handle it anymore. Uh, I mean, it's just absolutely impossible. I was doing mail all day today and all day yesterday. 
just to give you some idea, and I'm not even near finished. And it's, it keeps coming in. Uh, and, you know, Rush Limbaugh, in his eagerness to get out from under the spotlight, the uh, half-brained coward that he is, actually read a presidential memo talking about the dangerous shortwave broadcasters where he was saying, see, folks, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me the president's mad at. It's this fellow William Cooper who broadcasts out of a homemade storefront studio. <laughs> and I was the only one named in the entire memo, which means, folks, that I am hitting home right square in the middle of the target where I should be hitting. I am bombarding them with the truth. It is hurting them so badly that they have mounted a full-scale attack on us. And uh, that goes the same for Linda Thompson. That's why she is under such a heated attack. You know when she called for that march on Washington, D.C. by an armed militia to arrest the traitors, it scared them out of their minds? Were you aware of that? If you weren't, you should be. There's a reason why she did it. And it gave us an awful lot of intelligence that we needed to know. You see, folks, if we weren't doing the right things, if we weren't striking right to their heart, if we weren't tearing them down with the truth, they would ignore us. That's right, they would ignore us because that is their traditional reaction to their enemies. They never mention you anywhere unless you're hurting them terribly. The militia is a great threat. Shortwave radio is a great threat. Conservative talk show hosts across the country are a great threat to socialism. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, Bill. This is Chris from California. We have uh, S-735, which just passed the Senate. It said they built to prevent and punish acts of terrorism and other purposes. Yeah, well, you know, they've got five million laws that enable them to do whatever they need to do with anyone who breaks the law, including terrorists. Uh, these bills that they pass, uh, supposedly to deal with terrorists, are really to deal with the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Uh, exactly. And page 93 says, terrorist organization defined, as used in this act, the term terrorist organization means an organization which commits terrorist activity as determined by the Attorney General in consultation with the Secretary of State. In other words, anybody they say it is. That's it. Just like the anti-terrorism bill that's in Congress right now. That's right. Now, we have H.R. 1710, which is not on the floor yet, and S-761, which is on the floor. These, these bills I haven't even looked at, but uh, I suppose you haven't looked at them either. No. You haven't had time. Mm -mm. Now, it's time for me to join CAGI or the Intelligence Service, and I was wondering, uh, what's the difference? Well, um, there's a big difference. CAGI members are not under oath. They're merely people who have volunteered to gather information, and because of that, we give them breaks on prices and things. Members of the Intelligence Service are members of the militia of the Second Continental Army of the Republic, uh, they are subject to the Uniform Code of Military uh, Justice any time that they are functioning in a duty capacity. They are subject to be called up to fight to protect and defend the Constitution of their state, uh, to enforce the laws of the Union, suppress insurrection, or repel invasion. Excellent. And their duty, specifically in the Intelligence Service, is to gather information which is then distributed to the militia of the Second Continental Army of the Republic so that we can be knowledgeable and prepared in case we have to restore the Constitution to its rightful place as the supreme law of the land. Are we talking $100 for either one? Uh, well, it's $100 for the intelligence service. Right now we're not taking membership in CAGI, but we are contemplating opening that up in the future. Okay, sir. Uh, one last question. Out here in California, people are going crazy about the illegal immigration problem. Also, um, Pat Buchanan's stealing a lot of thunder out here. Um, I'm a firm believer in the Constitution Party. Um, there's a lot of people that are listening to you now that uh, want to know what you think of uh, Pat Buchanan. Can you say something about that? Well, I can tell you one thing right off the bat. Pat Buchanan is a member of the Sovereign and Military Order of the Knights of Malta. And that right there uh, is... is uh, 
the death blow as far as I'm concerned. Okay. And and that's all I need to know, and I sure appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Look at the history of Pat Buchanan, folks, specifically his duties in the White House and the Nixon administration, his duties and connections to the intelligence community. We have good reason to believe, and, and I mean excellent reason, to believe that he is an operative of the Central Intelligence Agency. And I'm not saying this to, because he's running for president. I've said it before, before he ever thought of running for president, even last time. It happens to be the truth. The man <laughs> is dirty. It's as simple as that. Good evening. You're on the air. Remember the Hegelian dialectic of political conflict resolution. Uh, they always have both sides of the deck stacked against us. Good evening, Bill. Good evening. This is Gary from Wyoming. And um, I was wondering if you'd ever covered the topic of uh, Gwen transmitters, the ground wave emergency network transmitters. No, I'm not sure I know exactly what it is, but we're out of time. Anyway, I, I just looked at the clock. <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. Uh, are you off the air then? Um, we're going to be off the air just in a second. got to let you go. Okay, can I call back and talk to you real quickly about it? No, actually, i got to get out of here. Thank you. i got a meeting to go to. I'm not trying to slough you off. I really do. Okay, I'll try to get a hold of you another way then. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Good night. For calling. And uh, good night, folks, and God bless you all. <laughs> Welcome to the new world order. <laughs> Never in human history has so few taken so much from so many as America's Illuminati and their warlords of Wall Street and Washington. In just eight years, these gangsters and international government gangsters took us from the greatest creditor nation to the largest debtor nation on Earth. Our standard of living has dropped like a rock for four out of every five Americans. They have foreclosed on our homes, our farms, our factories. They've exported your jobs and surrendered our arms. A new world order. A new world order. Illuminati wants you to be a slave from birth to grave. The banks do own the Federal Reserve. It's private. They own it. It's neither Federal nor a reserve. The cash has made that be a funny money stuff you call dollars for two pennies. They lend it back to us at full face value. They charge you interest. Do you get the debt? They get the interest. They get the gold. You get the shell. A new world order. A new world order. A new world order. It is a big idea. It is a big idea. Controls the CIA, the FBI, the ATF, and the FDA.